When I was in middle school and early high school, I used to make polymer clay charms all the time, but I really haven't touched the medium since then. But I've seen a lot of other artists making clay pins, so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to do myself. I'm not a huge fan of air dry clay, so I picked up a pack of Sculpey from Hobby Lobby, and then I got into sculpting the pins. I didn't really have an organized plan for any of the pin making process. I knew I wanted to paint the charms and then seal them with UV resin, but I wasn't really sure what kind of pins I wanted to make, so once it came to the actual sculpting, I just kind of came up with the ideas as I went. If you're unfamiliar with Sculpey, it's a polymer clay that hardens when you bake it in the oven, as opposed to an air dry clay that hardens over time. There's a lot of pros and cons to each, but I thought polymer clay would work a lot better for making pins just because they feel a lot sturdier, and on top of that, it's really convenient to just be able to throw them in the oven and have them be hardened. I wasn't super focused on making sure that the sculpted pieces were smooth and free of fingerprints because I was planning on sanding them down with sandpaper after I had baked them, but if I ever make more of these, I'm definitely going to spend the extra time to smooth out the clay while it's soft because sanding them down was honestly kind of a pain in the butt. Sculpting the pins was definitely the easiest and least time consuming of the steps for making these pins. It's a really simple process and really easy to sit down and zone out while doing. I also think it's worth mentioning that I set down this plastic mat on my work surface so I didn't get clay residue all over my desk. I actually got this one from an open stock paper section of Michael's like years and years ago. I also used a couple different sculpting tools that I had from when I used to make clay charms and they really came in handy for blending sections of clay together. That being said though, you don't really need any kinds of fancy sculpting tools for when it comes to making pins, unless you're doing like super intricate designs. Clay is soft enough so that you're able to do a lot of shaping with your hands, which is really nice. I've seen a lot of other people making clay pins by rolling out clay so it's an even thickness and then cutting out the individual shapes with some kind of knife or exacto knife, but I personally preferred the method of just grabbing a ball of clay and shaping it out by hand. None of the pieces I have are 100% even thickness because of doing it this way, but I think any kind of imperfections throughout this process just show that the pin is handmade and it adds a lot of charm to it. As far as the painting goes, I figured this would be the most tedious aspect of making these pins, so I was very prepared to have to sit down for a few hours at least to paint this batch. I used a set of Master's Touch acrylic paints, which is Hobby Lobby's brand, to paint these, but it was honestly a big mistake because the paints are still like weirdly sticky even when the paint has dried, which ended up causing a lot of issues. I painted this batch of pins in two sessions to give myself a break, and in the time between those two sessions, any dust that fell onto the pins stuck really well because the paint was still sticky. This was a pain because I had to repaint pretty much everything to cover up the dust, and as a whole, it was just a really unpleasant paint texture to work with because, like, if at any point I touched the pin, sometimes the paint would stick to my fingers, and when I pulled my finger away, it would, like, peel off the paint. It was, it was just a process. If I ever make these in the future, I definitely won't be using the same brand of paints. I've seen a lot of other people use Holbein acrylic wash for painting clay charms, but I don't have any tubes of that paint and it's pretty expensive, so I personally prefer sticking to a much cheaper alternative. I would, in theory, like to paint these with Poscas. I don't know if those will run once you seal them, but I think that would be really convenient. But again, I don't have a huge color selection of Posca pens, so sticking with acrylic paints was just what made the most sense to me. If I do ever make more clay pins though, I'll probably either try using apple barrel acrylic paints or even just using colored clay. I did go ahead and stick with pretty simple designs for all of the charms I ended up making just to make sure I wasn't cursing myself too much with work when it came to painting the pins, so it wasn't too bad. However, probably the biggest mistake that I ended up making through this process was just not really having much of a plan for doing anything. Originally, I was really focused on painting the backs of the pins, but I should have just been focused on painting the fronts and sides and leaving the backs for later. I knew I wanted to paint them because I've seen a couple of other instances where people don't paint the backs of the pins at all, and in my opinion, it looks a little bit tacky even if you never really see the back of the pins, so I did want to do some kind of color on the back, but I don't know, it was just kind of a mess the way I decided to go about doing things. If I ever do painted pins again in the future, I'm just going to initially focus on the front of the pin and worry about anything on the back at a later point, because it's really easy to just slap on a flat color onto the back at the end and call it good. 
I think I originally wanted to have the color of the front of the pin match the color of the back of the pin, but the stickiness of the paint was becoming a weird problem because it was taking so long to be dry enough for me to be able to touch the pin, and I'm not super confident at all when it comes to remixing colors to color match, so in the end I did decide to go ahead and just do a layer of a different color to cover the back of the pins, which didn't look bad by any means. For most of the pins, I did a dark brown, but I felt like that would have been a weird addition for the Nintendo Switch pins that I made, so for those ones, I did do black to cover the backs of the pins. In theory, I probably should have waited until I was 100% finished with painting the fronts of the pins to do the backs, but that is not what I ended up doing. I pretty much just started the next painting session with doing the backs, because my new plan was to paint the backs of the pins, let them dry, then glue on pin backings so I'd have some kind of grip to hold on to when it came to painting the fronts of the pins. This did end up being very helpful though when it did come to painting the fronts of the pins, but as a whole, the order of how I did things was just getting a little, a little chaotic the more we went. I got a set of gold pin backings from Hobby Lobby, but it only came with 13 and I was actually making 17 pins in this batch, so I went ahead and glued on magnets to the four other pins so that they'd all be finished at the same time. And then <laughs> yet another kind of chaotic step in this process, after painting the backs and putting the pin backings and the magnets on there, I decided to cover the backs of the pins with resin to further secure the pin backings in place, as well as completely finishing off the backs of the pins so I wouldn't have to worry about it later. This meant I was pretty much painting the backs, covering them with resin, and then later painting the fronts of the pins. It, it was a weird process. I was just kind of low-key worried that I would finish painting the pins completely, and then somehow in the resin process, the paint job on the fronts of the pins would get messed up, so I figured that this would be a good way to hopefully avoid that. Nothing necessarily bad happened because of doing it this way, but as a whole, I just took a very weird set of steps in getting these pins done. Covering the backs of the pins in resin did go well though, and it was nice to be able to further secure the pin backings onto the clay just by putting that small layer of resin on top, so that was really nice because I was kind of worried that the E6000 wouldn't be able to secure them well enough or it would fall off at some point or just something bad would happen, so I felt like they were a lot more secure with that resin on there. Also. I'm really sorry to anyone who is familiar or skilled when it comes to working with resin because my entire resin process is very disorganized and like the literal definition of chaos. So I'm sorry if it's hard to watch. I'm also a monster because even though I know I should and even though I have now been told on several occasions, I still didn't wear gloves when working with the UV resin. So again, if it's hard to watch, I'm very sorry. <laughs> But then we were back at it to painting the pins again. Like I said earlier, having the backings glued on was very convenient when it came to painting the front of the pins because it gave me something safe to hold on to without worrying about ruining anything as far as the paint goes. I actually didn't record the entire process of finishing painting the pins. Once I started doing the details, especially on the fruits basket charms I was making, I was having a really hard time painting the eyes on the characters, so I had a few back and forth tries of doing the eyes and then covering them with a new layer of paint and then trying again. It ended up getting pretty frustrating and I wasn't sure if I was going to get a result that I liked, so at a couple points I just stopped recording so I could focus more so on painting the pins versus making sure I was in frame and stuff. I tried using Posca pens for details here and there, but that wasn't working for a lot of the process either. The thinner Poscas I have are ones I got off of Amazon, and while on paper it's not super noticeable, they do feel a lot more watery than the Posca pens I got off of Blick, so I kind of think they're not genuine Poscas, I think they're just like similar barrels that are filled with similar ink, but they're not as opaque as my other Posca pens, and my other ones were really thick nibs, so I couldn't really use them on these, but I tried using the thin ones to help with drawing the eyes, and it wasn't super effective, so in the end I just used acrylic paint. It came out very uneven in texture, but thankfully the resin really helped hide the uneven paint and smooth things out once I put it on top. I was pretty certain that painting the pins was the worst part of the pin making process, so I was very excited once I finished and was finally able to seal them with resin, but ooh boy was I wrong about the painting being the worst part. 
I didn't include all the footage of me sealing the pins with resin, but it was such a long and annoying process. Sealing the tops and bottoms of the pins was fine, but once it came to putting resin on the sides of the pins, it was such a nightmare. I essentially had to do several rounds of applying resin and then curing the resin on different sides of the pins to ensure that it was completely covered in resin. It was just really tedious and very time consuming and easily my least favorite part about making the pins. I actually didn't even like finish off the sides of every single pin just because I was like, it's fine, I'm not selling them, I'm keeping them for myself. This works. It was just like, it was a lot. So if you have any tips or suggestions for an easier method of covering them with the resin, especially just like on the sides, I'd love to hear it. I think in the future I'll just use some kind of spray sealant to cover the back and the sides maybe and only cover the front with resin because I think that would just be a lot easier but I guess we'll see when we get there. So this was a very long process that I easily could have shortened the length of by some of the steps by just being more prepared and having a better plan of doing things, but I still am really happy with how this batch of pins turned out. I haven't made any finished clay things in years, and this was my first ever try at making clay pins, so I think they turned out really nice. Obviously, I learned a lot in doing this, so if I ever do make pins again, I would like to think that things would go a lot smoother. I was repeatedly telling myself throughout the resin process that this would be the last time that I'd ever make clay pins just because of how much of a hassle it was, but after looking at the footage of me making these again and just seeing the finished product, I already kind of want to make more. So if you guys would be interested in seeing more videos of me making clay pins, hopefully in a much more organized and like streamlined way, let me know and I'll consider torturing myself with this craft again because it was pretty fun to do something that's just not drawing. I love drawing so much, but it's nice to branch out and do like different things here and there. My favorite pin out of this batch is probably the Momiji pin, which is the little yellow rabbit. I wish I had made that one into a magnet actually because I have a set of the other fruits basket ones on my fridge and I think he would have made a really cute addition to them. I actually might in the future go ahead and make a lot more fruits basket characters into like either magnets or pins because I think they're really cute and it would be really cute to put on my fridge. So I might make those in the future. Like I said, depends if I want to torture myself with this craft again. <laughs> If you guys have any tips or tricks when it comes to this process, I'd love to hear them. I'm very comfortable working with clay, but I'm very new to pretty much every other step of this process, so I'm sure there's a lot I can learn. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.